Single Color Brioche is one of the most beautiful ribbings you'll find in knitting. It looks the same on both sides, making it great for scarves or blankets, but what if you want a brioche knit in the round for something like a hat? Like some other stitches worked in the round, the pattern for single color brioche in the round is slightly different than what you'd work for a flat piece. That's because as you knit flat, you're turning the work at the end of every row. But as you knit in the round, you're not turning and you're always looking at the same side. This means you have to change the pattern to make it all work out. To start single color brioche in the round, cast on an even number of stitches using whatever cast on method you prefer. I'm just working the long tail cast on here. And just like with other first round knitting projects, make sure the braid is along the inside and not twisted. With a working yarn and the tail at this side, pick it up and knit the first stitch. Normally you'd place a marker just before the first stitch there, but since brioche has a yarn over that can get caught up in the stitch marker, it'll sort of make the first rounds a little more confusing than they need to be. So I like to hook it right here for the first round. So if you're familiar with single color brioche working in a flat piece, this first round will be really familiar. Pull the yarn forward and slip the next stitch purlwise. Then with the yarn still forward, knit the next stitch, And that'll cause that little crisscross stitch, just like this. And that's what you want. You'll simply repeat that sequence to the end of the round. Pull the yarn forward, slip one purlwise, and knit with the yarn forward. At the end of the round, if you've done everything correctly, you should end on a slip one purlwise. Now to start the second round, we also need to slip this stitch, but unlike the last row, we need to wrap the yarn around first, and we'll get to why in just a minute. Then slip it purlwise. All right, next we have a brioche stitch here, a little crisscross one. And to work the next stitch, we have to wrap the yarn around the needle again. This time, we'll brioche purl. Now, since the yarn is already in front, you can go ahead and slip the next one purlwise. Wrap the yarn around the needle and brioche purl again. And that's the repeat. By the way, if you wanna see written instructions while you're following along, which is a great idea, or if you're wondering about the yarn I'm using or the needle size I'm using, just pop down to the description box below. I'll have a link that'll take you straight to my website where you can find that information as well as some project inspiration for the brioche stitch. All right, at the end of the second round, you should end with a brioche pearl, also known as BRP. And as you can see, the first stitch here is another brioche stitch. But this time, instead of brioche purling, because we're starting the next round, we're going to be working with BRKs, or brioche knits. So with the yarn forward as it is, brioche knit. Then pull the yarn forward and slip the next one purlwise. 
and repeat. Want an ad-free experience? How about the ability to enjoy all Beyoked content before anyone else? Members of my Patreon community not only get to watch all videos completely free of ads, but they also get the PDF for all new patterns. Choose the Insider Preview tier for these perks, or if you really love patterns, choose the Insider Plus tier to unlock an additional 76 classic Beehooked PDFs, as well as the entire archive of patterns released in 2021. Join my Patreon community today for all of these perks, as well as customized pattern support if you need it. You can cancel at any time if your financial situation changes, or if you simply change your mind. Links in the description below. Okay, we're at the end of the third round here, and your work should look something like this, ending with a BRK. You've probably noticed me carrying the stitch marker as I go, and once you've made it this far, you can really start placing it on the needle like you're already comfortable doing. So let's talk about the stitch for a minute. We've already seen the repeat, believe it or not. The stitch looks very complicated, but it's really just a two round repeat. Rounds two and three are the repeat for the pattern. So if you're feeling comfortable with things, keep repeating rounds two and three until the project measures the length you want. Then jump forward just a bit to the bind off. But if you're anything like me, when I first learned this stitch, I felt like I'd never memorize the pattern and I'd be stuck with the pattern glued to my forehead and it doesn't have to be that way. Let me share some tips. First, recognize that this stitch pattern requires a brioche knit and a brioche pearl round to make it all work. Just like the garter stitch in the round needs a knit and a pearl round to make the pattern, this one's sort of the same way. The lack of flipping the work is the reason for this. Second, when you're working a BRP round, the slipped stitches will align with the braid and the brioche stitches will align with the groove. By the way, single loops or stitches like this will always be slipped. So you can just go ahead and commit that one to memory. Alternatively, when you're working a BRK round, the slipped stitches align with the groove and the brio stitches align with the braid. Third, it's going to take a while before you really start seeing the pattern. You need at least a couple inches of knitting for it to really show. So if you're working through the first few rows and it doesn't look or feel right, give it a little bit of time to work itself out before you start over. Another thing to take note of is the BRP looks ever so slightly different from the BRK. Recognizing that difference might help you figure out where you are in the pattern if you have to put it down for a while. And here's a bit of practical advice too. The first few rounds are really finicky, and when you're trying this for the first time, just expect that you'll have to rip it out and start again, a few times. I honestly started and restarted at least 10 times before it really sank in. Whenever I try a new stitch in the round, I like to work on a nine inch circular like this, something you'd use for a pair of socks or mittens because it requires fewer stitches to wrap around than a 16 inch circular. I'm knitting fewer stitches, therefore it's not taking quite as long. So when I get to the point where I've made a mistake or I feel like things are wrong and I have to rip it out and start over, I have less time invested. This yarn, by the way, is gorgeous, right? It's Ferris Wheel from Lion Brand, and the color is called Cherry on Top. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to give this stuff a try. All right, let's get to the bind off, shall we? Technically, you can start the bind off on either round two or three, but I do think it's just slightly easier to work the bind off on round three. So that's what I'll demonstrate. So after you've finished a second row, the next stitch here is a brioche stitch, so go ahead and knit that one, but we're not going to count that in our bind off just yet. 
Now the next stitch is one of those slipped stitches and instead of slipping it, you'll purl it and then knit the next brioche stitch as well and pass that purl loop over this last one. And the next stitch is another slip stitch. You'll go ahead and purl that one and pass that first loop over the last. Knit the brioche stitch and pass the first loop over. Now if by chance you haven't tried single color brioche working in rows on a flat piece, I definitely encourage you to try that first. The repeat is just a single row and it'll help you build that muscle memory you need for this one. I have a tutorial here that'll show you how to do that and just for fun, an actual project you can work with the single color brioche stitch. Happy knitting and I'll see you in the next one.